It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Patty and Web Summit, for inviting me to be part of the opening night at our Web Summit. Particularly, I'm humbled and proud to be here as we are in my own country. Portugal is a country with exploration, exploration at its roots. We come from a long, long line of explorers. The reason that Magellan and those like him before him were such iconic explorers was their constant quest to discover the unknown, to always push past boundaries. My own journey started at the European Space Agency, where I helped push the physical boundaries of our own planet Earth. Now, with my team at Fidzai, we are pushing past new boundaries, using artificial intelligence to fight financial crime for some of the world's largest companies. We seek to keep pushing the limits of knowledge and innovation, and it's Fidzai's mission to explore these new tech frontiers, but also to use what we build to build a better world. With exploration comes risks and tremendous resp responsibility. Artificial intelligence, AI, is an incredible tool. There's no doubt about it. And while it's already having huge impact in many industries, it's still in its early days of development. And because it's such a powerful tool that will be streamed throughout much of our daily lives, we also need to assure that it's being put to good use in our world. Doctors, they take an Hippocratic oath to make sure that ethics are a central part of their practice. Other professionals have similar codes. And there has long been a chatter for the need of a code of ethics for engineering and for others involved in AI development, including recent regulatory pushes. But it's easy to say that it needs to be done. It's far harder to actually build the framework for what needs to be done. So what can we do? As AI leaders, it actually starts with us. It starts with the engineers and the companies building AI, the investors who are funding these companies, and the clients, the customers who buy from them. We are the ones that are responsible for understanding and the checks of balances needed in order to eliminate biases in AI's decision-making process. And to put resources into the teams that continue research on the risk and what we are building, and to design code that benefits all of humanity. Of course, it's not easy to take those actions, but it's vitally important. It is something that our children and grandchildren will thank us and will be proud of us for Pioneer. And it's in the spirit of this being a pioneer in developing technology for the greater good that we invited the next speaker to help us open Web Summit. We wanted someone that shared Fidzai Sam's beliefs for optimism for the future. And someone that together will be able to transcend boundaries. And no other person embodies more this than our next guest spe spe uh, speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to present. Can you hear me? My name is Stephen Hawking. I would like to thank Fidze for inviting me to speak with you today. I wish to welcome you all to Web Summit. I plan to speak about artificial intelligence, a topic that is of importance to you professionally and to society at large. There are many challenges and opportunities facing us at this moment and I believe that one of the biggest of these 
is the advent and impact of AI for humanity. As most of you may know, I am on record as saying that I believe there is no real difference between what can be achieved by a biological brain and what can be achieved by a computer. Of course, there is unlimited potential for what the human mind can learn and develop, so, if my reasoning is correct, it also follows that computers can, in theory, emulate human intelligence and exceed it. We cannot predict what we might achieve when our own minds are amplified by AI. Perhaps with the tools of this new technological revolution, we will be able to undo some of the damage done to the natural world by the last one, industrialization. We will aim to finally eradicate disease and poverty. Every aspect of our lives will be transformed. In short, success in creating effective AI could be the biggest event in the history of our civilization, or the worst. We just don't know. So we cannot know if we will be infinitely helped by AI, or ignored by it, and sidelined, or conceivably destroyed by it. Unless we learn how to prepare for, and avoid, the potential risks, AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. It brings dangers, like powerful autonomous weapons, or new ways for the few to oppress the many. It could bring great disruption to our economy. Already we have concerns that clever machines will be increasingly capable of undertaking work currently done by humans, and swiftly destroy millions of jobs. AI could develop a will of its own, a will that is in conflict with ours, and which could destroy us. In short, the rise of powerful AI will be either the best, or the worst thing, ever to happen to humanity. That is why in 2014, I and a few others, called for more research to be done in this area. I am very glad that someone was listening to me. What is the answer? To control AI and to make it work for us, and eliminate, as far as possible, its very real dangers, we need to employ best practice and effective management in all areas of its development. It goes without saying, of course, that this is what every sector of the economy should incorporate into its ethos and vision, but with artificial intelligence this is vital. Everyone here today is in the vanguard of AI development. We are the scientists, we develop an idea. But you are also the influencers, you need to make it work. Perhaps we should all stop for a moment, and focus our thinking not only on making AI more capable and successful, but on maximizing its societal benefit. Our AI systems must do what we want them to do, for the benefit of humanity. Interdisciplinary research can be a way forward, ranging from economics and law, to computer security, formal methods, and of course, various branches of AI itself. Such considerations motivated the American Association for Artificial Intelligence's presidential panel, on long-term AI futures, which up to recently had focused largely on techniques that are neutral with respect to purpose. However, in January this year, MEPs called for more comprehensive robot rules in a new draft report concerning rules on robotics and citing the development of AI as one of the most prominent technological trends of our century. The report calls for a set of core fundamental values, an urgent regulation on recent developments to govern the use and creation of robots and AI. Somewhat surprisingly, this includes a form of electronic personhood to ensure the rights and responsibilities 
for the most capable and advanced AI. One of the partners at the multinational law firm, Osborne Clark, says that we don't give whales and gorillas personhood, so there is no need to jump at robotic personhood. But the wariness is there. The report acknowledges the possibility that within the space of a few decades, AI could surpass human intellectual capacity and challenge the human-robot relationship. Finally, the report calls for the creation of a European agency for robotics and AI that can provide technical, ethical, and regulatory expertise. If MEPs vote in favor of legislation, the report will go to the European Commission which will decide what legislative steps it will take. I am an optimist, and I believe that we can create AI for the good of the world. That it can work in harmony with us. We simply need to be aware of the dangers, identify them, employ the best possible practice and management, and prepare for its consequences well in advance. Perhaps some of you listening today will already have solutions or answers to the many questions AI poses. We all have a role to play in making sure that we, and the next generation, have not just the opportunity, but the determination to engage fully with the study of science at an early level, so that we can go on to fulfill our potential and create a better world for the whole human race. We need to take learning beyond the theoretical discussion of how AI should be, and take action to make sure we plan for how it can be. You all have the potential to push the boundaries of what is accepted, or expected, and to think big. We stand on the threshold of a brave new world. It is an exciting, if precarious, place to be, and you are the pioneers. I wish you well. Thank you for listening.